So the new product is our new battery. This battery is built upon the foundation of everything we learned from our first, second, and third generation battery. This is actually our fourth generation battery. And, you know, it's part of the Enphase ecosystem, right? It's part of the, the whole home ecosystem, microinverters, batteries, now EV chargers, one software platform, all under one roof, warranted by the leading home energy technology brand in the industry, period. You know, you could say Tesla's the leading, you know, brand, but they lead on EV chargers. I'm sorry, on, on EVs, not on solar, right? They're kind of fringe on solar. So we got this new battery. What are the main benefits? So here's the main benefits. I'm just going to list them off. We got more power. We got faster, more reliable communication, more flexibility for you can put equipment on a homeowner site. You got a 5KW8 building block. Why does this matter? Well, think of it like Legos. You don't want to have a huge Lego to fit every customer. You want to be able to customize the right solution for the right customer. Instead of going from 13 to 26, right? You get to go from 10 to 15 or 15 to 20, right? You're going to get a better value proposition, more cost-effective solution for customers. And then of course, boom, we got a 15 year leading industry warranty, right? Which is amazing, right? It's just a better warranty than any other product in the marketplace. Okay. The profile is pretty slick, two feet wide, a little bit, uh, almost three feet tall. You're fitting two of these vertically on a wall. You can put a quad. If you only have about four or five feet of, of wall space, you can get 20 KWH on one wall, right? With four, four or five feet, right? too high, super thin. Uh, I don't think you've made it as a solar professional until you understand this difference, right? This is fundamental. This is core. This is the basics. This is this is how you understand how to design systems, right? And so when you talk about power, when it talks to, when it comes to batteries, what you're really talking about is how many loads you can run simultaneously, how fast you can charge and just charge your battery. Why does that matter? We're gonna talk about that in two different contexts. And the two contexts we're going to talk about it is in terms of savings and backup. You got to understand what batteries are for. If homeowners throw you like, uh, hey, what do you want batteries for? And they go, I want to be energy independent. Well, that's not very actionable. That doesn't really connect, right, with something meaningful. It's kind of abstract, right? Oh, I want to have freedom from the utility. Uh, okay, cool, right? Nothing wrong with that. I wouldn't like make it wrong. I'd still kind of get, oh, that's awesome to have freedom from the utility. What does that mean to you, right? What does that mean to your family? And the two things it really means is batteries provide savings. They save you money. Now in California, batteries can save you money. How do they save you money? Well, they allow you to buy low, sell high. How can you buy low, sell high? Well, you're buying your own solar energy, right? Instead of buying from the grid, you're buying your own solar energy. You're putting in a battery right? From yourself. Solar is the cheapest form of electricity you can buy. If you amortize the cost of a system, it's like 12 cents per kilowatt hour. That's amazing compared to almost any rate in the US, right? So you buy your own energy low and you sell high. Who do you sell to? You sell to yourself. You sell to yourself from the battery because you're offsetting costs that would be 82 cents or 60 cents or 50 cents. So you're selling energy from your own battery to yourself. So batteries save you money in California and in many other markets today, through doing this fancy thing called self-consumption. It really just means buying energy low, putting it in your battery, storing it for later, using it when energy is expensive, okay? So they save you money and batteries can also keep the lights on. They can provide backup power. They can provide, you know, uh, resilience, some people call it, right? But you wanna think of those as two very, very concrete things to the homeowner that matter to them, that matter to their families, that make a difference for their day-to-day -day living, right? You wanna connect with those at a very, very, fundamental level. You don't want to think about it like, oh, freedom from the utility, security for your family, bam, right in the center. It's a totally different level. You want to make sure you understand that batteries provide savings, they save you money, and they provide backup power. And those things are very, very concrete. And when you think about a system that has more power, it does two very important things. The first thing it does, and I invite you to screenshot this, is it provides power to start larger appliances during a blackout. So we talk about backup power. You can start more, you can run more, you can power more things at the same time, right? This is backup power. Compared to the other competitors, there's no comparison. More powerful with less KWH. The specific, you can't win it. If you're actually talking about in phase, you can't win because you get more power, you get better warranty, better chemistry, 
customer service team, right? You just got a more solid foundation to build from. And this means you can start larger loads with less batteries. With only 15 kWh of interface, you can start four and five ton air conditioners. Five ton air conditionings with only 15 kWh. You need 27 kWh of other products to do that. Before, the way we worked is we had three threes and you could put three threes and one ten and that was like a case. So it was a little bit complicated. We just made it simple. Now we have a 5 kWh Lego. That's our building block. 5 kWh. You want one? You go with five. You want two? You go with two, right? Two is 10. Three is 15. Four is four. Is 20, right? So you're just, you're building, you're building your system 5 kWh at a time. And we think that's a really nice balance. The math is easy. It's clean. It's small enough that you can get the kind of granularity you want for your customer, right? So you're not, like I said, going from 13 to 27, right? You can go from 10 to 15 to 20 if you want, which might make more sense for your customer, but it's big enough that each 5 kWh is meaningful. And with the more power that we have, so we go back to here for a second, you know, every five now is actually equivalent in power to what a 10 was before. So a five is now supporting 20 amps. And this is my favorite slide just for practicality. When people really want to understand practicality, here's the way it works. When you put a five on the system for backup, you're supporting 20 amp circuits. I recommend you screenshot this, right? You're supporting 20 amp circuits. When you put two fives, you're supporting 40 amp circuits. And three fives, you're supporting up to 60 amp circuits, right? And really in most homes, you're not going to have a, a load that's larger than 60 amps. 97% of homes have 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 amp circuits, 60 amp circuits, not higher than that. They may have a 100 amp breaker for a sub panel, but that's not a 100 amp circuit. That's just powering a sub panel that has a whole bunch of smaller circuits on it. So the summary is 15 kWh. Now, 15 kWh, why is that the magic number? Well, because almost all homes have circuits that are 16, 60 amps and less, you can now install a whole home backup system with 15 kWh. This is a very powerful microinverter. So we have 640 watts times six. That turns out to be 3,840 3, watts. So it's almost four kilowatts in one of these little fives, right? It's super powerful. One of these fives has 80% of the power as a 13 kWh um, Franklin or as a 10 kW, uh, kWh um, solar edge. It's a lot, a lot more power. There was one more point I wanted to make that was super important which is, why is this so significant? What do you avoid when you do whole home backup? You do whole home backup, you avoid an MPU. The phenomenon is if you do whole home backup, you move all the loads into a backup load panel. Okay, okay, I got all the most loads in the backup load panel. What does that do to the main panel? It turns the main panel into a bypass. Nothing's in the main panel anymore. Nothing's in the main panel. I put all the loads in the backup panel. Okay, so how much can I backfeed? I can backfeed everything. Why? Because I got nothing on the main panel. I don't have to worry about the main panel being overloaded because I have nothing there. Everything's downstream. Everything's on our backup system and our system controls that. So on a 200 amp main service panel, you do whole home, you can get 200 amps of solar and batteries. 125 amp main service panel, do whole home backup. You can do 125 amps of solar and batteries with whole home backup. When you think about the standard like solar 20% rule, what happens is now that main breaker can't protect that main panel. Why? Because you have two sources of power. You don't just have the 200 amps from the utility, you have solar too. So if you're using like 250 or 300, now you could have 200 coming from the utility plus another 50 or 60 or 70 or 80. Now you could overload that main panel. And so when we take all those breakers out of the main panel, we throw it in the backup panel, that main panel becomes a bypass. Our system just basically protects everything downstream and we're not passing. There's no way we can get more than 200 amps on that 200 amp main service panel because we have 200 amps coming in, 200 amps coming out, kind of like a highway. We're just passing right by it. We're not having to worry about a main service upgrade. So 15 kWh or larger, backup systems, backup systems, whole home backup, no MPU. Okay. So I want, I want to really provide that super clear as a, as a really effective strategy. So I talked about us being able to Back up a whole home with only 15 kWh or more, you may want to go 20. People talk about an M3.0 like it's the worst thing ever. Well, it's not. For the first time ever, homeowners can participate in selling power to the wholesale utility market. They're selling power. 
they're dumping the battery and they're getting $3 per kilowatt hour in, in some AHJs, in some utilities, 290, 310, depending on weekend and weekdays, it's as high as $3. So we're going to dump the battery to the grid, right? During these peak periods, and they're going to get a lot of extra money. And because that increased power, right? Because we have more power, imagine an air conditioning is pulling five kilowatts at 7 p.m. in the summer, or 6 p.m. during this like key period. You're not going to tell your homeowners to turn off your air conditioning in the middle of September when it's hot. No, no, no. They're going to use what they're going to use. The problem is any of these other batteries, it's going to go to the homeowner's loads. There's not going to be any extra. So all of the power is going to go right to the home. There's no extra. With end phase, we can discharge that battery so quickly that you can serve that 5KW and get another seven back. People say, oh, it's not that much money. It's only, you know, only a couple of days a year. No, no, no. It's every night for the whole month in these high payment months, seven bucks, right? Sorry, seven kilowatts, say six and a half kilowatts times $3 is $20 per day times 30 days in a month is $600 per year. $600 per year extra for homeowner value in terms of offset, that's huge. That's a big improvement. That's five to 10% additional savings you're going to get because you're getting all this extra power. So power matters for backup, power matters for savings. You give your customer a more powerful battery. They're going to save more money over time.